Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use an Old Country Barbecue Pit's gravity-fed smoker. A while ago, Old Country Barbecue Pit sent me their prototype for the gravity-fed smoker. It was the same shape, much taller, and it didn't use space as economically as this one does. So this one is more compact, but still has a tremendous amount of cooking space. It's a really, really cool pit. That being said, they sent this production model to me, and I'm just testing it out and seeing what I think, and i um, gonna produce some content with it and see how it goes. So the first thing I wanna go over is how this pit functions, and then we're gonna actually demonstrate how it works. I'm gonna spray the inside with oil to season it. I already have done a couple how to season your smoker videos, so we're not gonna focus on that. We're gonna focus on how this thing actually runs and operates. Also, jetzt können wir anfangen. All right, first, let's go over the anatomy of the smoker. Right here, we got the cook chamber. So you're gonna put all the meat that you're cooking in this part of the smoker. Here, we got the stack right here, and it's a pretty small stack uh, because it's going to draw air pretty well for how a gravity smoker works, and it doesn't need a huge stack to draw the air out because the air is gonna be going straight up anyway. Um, right here, we have the opening to the charcoal chute, and so, this is where you're gonna fill your charcoal up, right here, and your charcoal is gonna be sitting here. And then right here, we have the opening for where you can put in your wood chunks. Lastly, we have a little ball valve here to adjust how much air goes in, and that's how you're gonna control the temperature. Now let's examine the cook chamber. So first things first, we have three racks in here, and this is actually a humongous amount of space. I know it might not look like it, but you can fit a lot of meat on just those three racks because they're bigger than you would think when you pull them out. Like, oh, I could fit, you know, several pork butts there. I could fit several racks of ribs underneath. I could put some chicken under that. You can cook quite a bit of food without it taking up too much space. Next, we have these latches. Now, I am a big fan of these latches because they are heavy duty and they really lock things in place. Uh, and that's important because you don't want this thing to be you know, opening up or leaking because the reason a gravity fed smoker works the way it does is because it holds the air in and it holds the heat in. And that's why these walls are so thick because they're filled with insulation. The insulation retains the heat. So what you end up doing is burning an incredibly efficient fire with your charcoal. Uh, we'll talk more about the charcoal and how that works in a minute, but this thick insulation is the key to making it work. And also to that end, you notice that on the door, you have high temperature gasket to make sure that there's nothing leaking out. And that's why a gravity fed smoker is unique in how it cooks. A lot of smokers have thick metal to retain heat. This does an even better job because it's all insulated. One last thing about the cook chamber is the thermometer, okay? These doors are very thick because they're filled with insulation, which means that you're gonna have to get a thermometer with a very long stem so that you actually get this thing a fair amount into the cook chamber so you get accurate reading. So if you have a short thermometer, it's not gonna work. Get one with a long enough stem. I think this is a five inch stem on this guy, uh, but this is the kind of thermometer you need and the kind that you're gonna to wanna to get for this. So this is an old country barbecue pits thermometer. I've never had any issues with these at all. They've always worked great. Um, I have Teltrues, I have a bunch of different kinds. Uh, these, in terms of bang for your buck, you're not gonna beat it. Here we've got the stack, and you notice it's not a huge stack. Now on the Old Country Brazos, one thing is it's got a big stack and that's one of the reasons why it works so well. Whereas for this, because the entire cook chamber is insulated, it's gonna keep the air hot and it's gonna to want to escape. The other issue is with a gravity fed smoker, we're not trying to move huge volumes of air like you would in an offset smoker in order to burn a clean fire and make good flavors while you're running the pit. This operates very, very differently as you guys will see soon, but we don't need a huge stack. And so I know they did a lot of work on this and they spent a lot of time designing it and testing it. And I think this will probably work really well, but let's find out. This is the charcoal chute. Let's open it up. Hello, 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 hello. All right, so it might not look huge, but it holds quite a bit of charcoal. And that means that it will cook for a long time without having to add more. Uh, we'll try to get a camera shot of inside this thing. You'll see a grate at the bottom and then to the side facing the cook chamber, you'll see some expanded metal. That's where the air moves through into the cook chamber. And we'll try to get a shot from up here and then a shot from down here with this door so you get a sense of how this thing actually is set up to operate. 
Let's talk about this door right here. Now this door is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, because this valve right here regulates how much air goes in and is going to end up going through the cook chamber and out the stack. So this is your temperature regulator. Now you can attach things that regulate the air automatically, but what I found with the prototype at least is that once you kind of get it dialed in, you can just leave it and it just runs like clockwork. I mean, whole steady temps, you could walk away for hours and hours and have no issues, no problems. So that is why this is important. Then the door itself is very important too because right here, this little box is where you put in the wood chunks. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have lit charcoals above it and those embers are gonna be falling down because this grate holds the charcoal up. So you have lit charcoal right here, amber's dropping down onto the wood chunks and they're gonna kind of provide smoke and flavor that's gonna get drawn along with the hot air into the cook chamber and provide smoke for the meat that you're cooking inside. Next, let's talk about the grease drain. You, can, you might be able to see it sticking out right here. This is critically important because you don't wanna start any grease fires. But then the other thing that's good about this design is it's low to the ground so you don't have grease splattering. So if you're you know, cooking up and you have this thing set up on concrete, um, it's not gonna fall a long distance, the grease that is, it's not gonna fall a long distance and splatter all over your concrete. So here it's low to the ground so you can put a container down to catch any grease that comes out. It's simple but effective and uh, it's easy if you're trying to avoid splattering. Now it's time to see how this thing works. I'll show you how to fire it up and how to get it running right. Like I said, got a season today. So before I light the fire, I'm gonna oil this up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is light about a half chimney of charcoals to get this started. Underneath, I have some greasy butcher paper from a brisket that I cooked, and I'm gonna use this torch to get it going more quickly than it would otherwise. So here we go. Our coals are ashed over now, so we're going to pour them into the chute. Now that we have our lit coals in the chute, we're gonna open the chimney and we're going to pour the remaining charcoal that we're gonna use for this cook into the chute. And then we have to lock this up so that you don't have a raging inferno right here. You want it to stop air from coming in through the top and come only through the side. So let's fill it up with charcoal. All right. Now it's important when you put the coals in that you have this ball valve wide open and you have the chimney wide open so it starts moving air through and you start to bring it up to the proper temperature. One other note is the kind of charcoal you wanna use. I would highly recommend using briquettes because they feed through the chute better. A lot of times if you have big chunks of lump, it can get caught and it doesn't continue to feed through. And then you got a halt in the cooking process and you gotta go fix it and that's a huge pain in the behind. I would recommend using briquettes. Now that we've got the fire going, we can add a few wood chunks because these will provide flavor and smoke for whatever you're cooking inside the cook chamber. And like I said, the coals fall down on this and that's where the smoke's gonna come from. The charcoal provides heat, the wood chunks provide smoke and flavor. It's been about an hour now, and basically the process to dialing this thing in to the exact temperature that you want is start with everything wide open, and then you dial down the air coming in with the ball valve. And so usually for me, I wanna cook at 275. Um, to season this pit, I wanted to get really hot first, so I let it come up to a, a cruising altitude of, I don't know, 350 degrees. Then I started closing down the ball valve until it settled in to exactly where I want it. So if I look at this right now, looks like it's sitting right at 270. Perfect, no problem with that. And you just maintain the temperature by the amount of air you have coming in through the valve. So this thing will rock and hold steady for hours and hours at this temperature. It's super easy, super simple how to run this thing. So just adjust the air intake and you can control the temperature. You can go nuclear hot and you can keep it nice and low. 
but you can actually ramp up the temperature more if you put in a lot of those wood chunks. Uh, but it's just a matter of how much wood you want to add for the flavor you want. Now, you can put in some wood and get some smoke flavor. You can put in a lot of wood and get more smoke flavor, but if you put in too much, it starts to taste bitter. So dial that in. I use probably one chunk of wood, maybe the size of a baseball, every 30 minutes or so, and to me that seems to work really well, and I'm very happy with those results in the prototype. I imagine it'll be the exact same way in this cooker too. Now one other thing that I want to mention about this cooker. The reasons that people like these cookers is number one, it's extremely efficient. Number two is it's extremely easy. Once you get it dialed in, you just rock and roll, barbecue as long as you want. And number three, and this one's important for me here, even though I live in California, I'm not getting a ton of snow. I mean, it does snow up here on top of this mountain sometimes. But the thing that happens that ruins a lot of barbecue cooks is wind. Wind, to me, is a far greater enemy to great barbecue than snow or cold weather. I can cook in snow or cold weather, no problem, totally fine. If I have to cook in a lot of wind, humongous problem. The fact that this thing is insulated keeps it from being hyper affected by the wind. It's amazingly consistent. And just to put it in perspective, 270 degrees inside, I can put my hand right here and it's maybe a little bit warmer than the normal metal would be. That's how well insulated this magnificent piece of machine is. So if you guys like this cooker, if it's interesting to you, you can buy one on the Academy website. I'm gonna be cooking a bunch of stuff on this guy and really put it through its paces and see what it's like. I think the first cook I'll do will probably be ribs as a good baseline, it's a short cook, and then I'll be moving on to doing some pork butts and briskets and, and chicken and all kinds of other things and see how it does at low temperatures, at high temperatures, and really get a good sense of how well it works. But this is how to get it set up and this is how you should start running it. If there are any questions about how this thing works that I didn't answer, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at MadScientistBarbecue. I'll see you guys next time.